Okay, so um okay. good day everyone. I'm Swajini Timlain Bakari. I'm a current student of the Air School of Economics, Moscow, where I'm studying cognitive sciences and technologies. And today I'll be introducing you to schizophrenia. Uh, here is the content of um this short introductory uh, presentation. And um, at the end, you would be able to um, describe what schizophrenia is, the history of schizophrenia, the etymology, as well as the um, perception, how our perception of schizophrenia has changed over time, the etiology, pathophysiology, risk factors, the symptoms and um, phases of psychosis in schizophrenia, the diagnosis and classification, as well as the available um, methods of treatment uh, for schizophrenia. Um, but before we continue, uh, I would like to show a short video of about two minutes um, so that we can get a, a feel or an idea of what uh, schizophrenia is all about. So um, here's the video. Where am I? Where are you going? Look out! This is pointless. <laughs> Even that kid knows you're stupid. <laughs> Everyone knows you're stupid. Don't go in there. Don't go Nobody in there. Nobody cares about you. Why do you even try? Why do you even bother? What are you looking for? Everything's listening to you. You don't deserve happiness. The wine bottles. See, they're, they're laughing. She's talking. They're oh. looking at you. Everybody yeah, laughs at you. Talking about you. Go ahead. Make you fat. Get some ice cream. You don't want worthless. that. It'll make you fatter than you already are. Worthless. Point. Look out. Trash. Take no, don't take that one. It's no, go over to the other one. It's poison. Grab a wine bottle. Go ahead. A couple bottles of booze. Just drink it. Drink it, it. Drink it until you're Look out. passed out. Nobody cares. Worthless. Where did they go? Nobody ahead. loves you. No one could. Get some junk food. <sighs> they don't it's care. Clean. The, the people, they're talking about you. Even he can't you're even such a loser. You. Oops, he's walking away because you stink. You smell. Why do you he's calling the cops? Are you stupid? They're fake yeah, smiles. He back to you because he doesn't like it's you. Going to catch you. Oh. And she's leaving you. because you're worthless. You should have never oh, been yeah, born. go ahead. Grab it all. Eat all the food. Don't touch that. Eat it all. Don't, Don't touch that. Don't bother getting out of bed. Doesn't matter. Doesn't matter how fat you get. What are you thinking? Go ahead. Uh, don't don't eat that one. That. Don't drink that one. Go get some Next alcohol. You're going to die. Go get the ice cream. There's the oh, you give up. Oh, the lights. There. The lights. Where'd they go? All right. Um. So um, I cut the video shut so as to avoid um problems with the presentation and um, so as to not bore us with um the whole idea of schizophrenia. So from this video, we can see hallucinatory, um, hallucinatory um, voices that the person in question um, was hearing. Also, um, you could see that this person was suffering from a lot of thought insertions and a lot of other um, symptoms, uh, but um, sim um, very similar to what people um, are diagnosed with schizophrenia actually go through. So uh, what's schizophrenia? Schizophrenia is a serious psychotic disorder that is characterized by impairment in a person's behavior as a result of impairment in the ability to um, interpret reality, reality in a, in a normal way. It is a, is a, a long-term disorder that um, makes a person think uh in a disorderly manner uh, as also also make make them um, unable to manage emotions make decisions and relate well with people um, around them schizophrenia is characterized by hallucinations delusions disorganized speech and thoughts as well as cognitive impairment as we can see in these images
So where did the word schizophrenia come from? Who coined the term schizophrenia? And what is um, our, the early perception of schizophrenia and other mental illnesses? And how did our knowledge of schizophrenia and mental disorders evolve um, over time? Early in the 19th century, schizophrenia was perceived as um, demence precox, that is um, dementia of the, uh, of the brain, when um, the brain was seen as a degenerating, uh, as it was seen as a problem that occurs from a degenerating uh, brain. In 1908, it was named by Eugen Leula from two Greek words, schizo meaning split, and phreny meaning mind. So um, schizophrenia can be simply said to be split mind or fragmented mind or um, fragmented thinking or split thinking. Please note that um, split mind or split thinking is not the same as uh, split personality. They are two different disorders. Split um, thinking is when the person's thought is splitted and split personality is when a person exhibits two extreme characters. Um, when two extreme characters are present in one um, person, like um, in, the, in, in, in a day, the person is melancholic, uh, and on another day, the person is maybe um, uh, an extrovert or something. Um, in the 20th century, however, our knowledge of schizophrenia was more elaborated by Emil Kreplin, who described um, schizophrenia as demons precox as well, but uh, subcategorized um, schizophrenia into different categories, categories and uh, based on symptoms and some anatomical um, abnormalities found through imaging uh, methods uh, into different categories. And all of these classifications really helped in the um, advent of um, antipsychotic medications, psychoanalysis, as well as most of the methods that we know today in the treatment of schizophrenia is um, discoveries also aided in the uh, current classification of schizophrenia, the method of classification used for classification of schizophrenia by the Diagnostic and Statistical Manual of Mental Disorders, as well as the International Classification of Disorders, uh, version 10. In the mid 20th century, at, um, psychoanalysis was um, developed, was birthed, and this further helped in mental disorders generally, but was found not to be so effective for schizophrenia. And uh, as a result, research continued. And in the 1950s and 1960s, um, the discovery of antipsychotic medications um, occurred. It is important to, dis to discuss about the discovery of antipsychotic medications because it is a big uh, and very important landmark in the uh, when we, when we discuss the history of schizophrenia because without these medications, um, a lot of hypotheses about um, neurotransmitter neurotransmitter problems occurring in the brain would have would not have uh, come into existence. So um, with the discovery of antipsychotic medications came the discovery or, or the suggestion of several hypotheses which suggested that neurochemicals in the brain, uh, whether when they are hyperactive or underactive or hyperactivity uh, and hyperactivity uh, lead to the development of schizophrenia. Um, also, another important landmark happened in the 1960s to 1970s when this deinstitutionalization uh, a, a method in which schizophrenia patients were uh, advocated for not to be kept in the hospitals and clinics, and they were um, they were they were advocated for to be taken home and be taken care of um, in the community. That is the introduction of our community care. So, what is our current perception of schizophrenia? What changed in our perception of schizophrenia? Nothing really changed that much, but um, with more understanding um, of the 
potential factors that could lead to development of schizophrenia uh, would agree and would, uh, would say that our perception have greatly been uh, changed and en enhanced. So according to the Diagnostic and Statistical Manual of Mental Disorders, the fifth edition, as I explained earlier, schizophrenia is perceived as a psychotic disorder viewing from a psychoanalytic point of view and psychopathologic point of view where people undergo psychosis in schizophrenia in different phases the same um, similarly you can see it in um, the icd-10 the international classification of um, disorders the 10th uh, edition also seen schizophrenia as a psychotic disorder um, with a similar uh, method of perception to the dsm-5 although it lead to uh, changes in the mode of um, diagnosis. So um, the third um, fact, that the, the, the third part that I've contributed to our um, current perception of schizophrenia is advances in um, neurodevelopmental, neuropsychological, neuroanatomical, and um, different kinds of research methods. According to the neurodevelopmental models, uh, it, has been, it has been suggested that Schizophrenia could have occurred uh, as a result of birth abnormalities during development in the womb, um, while the baby while the baby was in in the womb, and then several environmental factors could have led to abnormalities in brain um, formation, and this in turn results in the development of schizophrenia. And in some, the neuroscientific neuroimaging models, as we can see, have shown that. Um, some parts of the brain of people suffering from schizophrenia are degenerated and a bit different in structure uh, when compared to the brain of elderly individuals. Um, the last um, field that has contributed to um, our current perception of schizophrenia is the field of psychosocial uh, interventions. Um, psychosocial interventions have made us known that um, social factors such as uh, our current place of um, dwelling, um, migration, uh, urbanization, as well as a uh, rural area, whether we are dwelling in the rural area, could also impact, uh, uh, could also um, contribute to the development of uh, schizophrenia. So um, what is the impact? What is the global, global body of schizophrenia around the world? According to the WHO, um, schizophrenia is not so prevalent with a 0.32%. That is about 24 million people worldwide suffer from schizophrenia. Um, and the incidence rate is around 0.45%. That is one in 300 percent worldwide. And uh, one in 222 uh, adults can develop um, schizophrenia. Also, it is important to know that in in men, schizophrenia tends to develop early, um, around the early twenties and their late teen, teenage years. While for women, it um, occurs in the late twenties to early thirties. There is high mortality rate uh, that has been attached to schizophrenic um, individuals as well, uh, not because of the schizophrenia, but because of um, other disorders, other health. Um, health challenges that arise as, as a result of developing schizophrenia. Some people um, feel depressed post-episodes um, post, uh, post of schizophrenia and they commit suicide. Some people, as a result of their medications, um, gain excessive weight and develop cardiovascular problems due to their inability to go around, um, due to the stigma and a lot of other factors um, that I will explain um, for um in further in this presentation okay so um one uh, alarming factor is the fact that burden of schizophrenia is on the increase globally yes schizophrenia is um, around 0.3 percent less than one percent uh prevalent but the burden according to the who and a lot of um, researchers is rising on a yearly basis uh, and we can see this in these um, graphs. We can see um, this talking about the um, incidence rate per 100,000 persons um, in different age groups, um, which I spoke of earlier, um, about men 
developing schizophrenia earlier than women. You can see it here. And you can see it as the pyramid um, peaks with um, a, a kind of a, a level of um, equality and not really equal in um, people with old age, in, in, in old age. And here we can see the estimated annual percentage change in um, the incidence of um, schizophrenia around the world. And according to these uh, authors, it is um, going to keep changing as people migrate from one part of the world to another, talking about um, environmental factors. So what are the uh, what, what, what are the causes? What are the risk factors that have been attached to the development of schizophrenia? Um, it is important to note that the cause of schizophrenia is unknown. Nobody knows what causes schizophrenia. However, the risk factors, um, those factors that could probably, that could um, be potential causes of um, schizophrenia development have been categorized into three main uh, subcategories, and they are the, um, the, the, the genetics or family history, um, neurotransmitter problems, uh, neurochemical problems in the brain, as well as environmental factors. So um, when we talk of genetics, I think we all have an idea uh, of um, a family history, when a person in a, uh, in a family develops a, a kind of disorder, and then the tendency of passing it on from one generation to another. Um, I'm, I'm, I'm sure we are familiar with problems of uh, maybe uh, myopia, short-sightedness, long-sightedness, people with eye problems, then they, they, they pass it from one generation to another. Then um, also several genes have been isolated and, been, and they have been um, associated with the development of schizophrenia due to um, some malformations in their formation, okay? So um, for neurotransmitters, um, a lot of neurotransmitters have been associated with the development of schizophrenia as well. Neurotransmitters are chemicals in the brain that enhance the transfer of impulses from one nerve from one nerve cell to another nerve cell. So uh, some of them are uh, dopamine, serotonin, glutamate, uh, as well as um, gamma monobutyric acid, uh, as, other, as well as other alpha adrenergic uh, neurotransmitters. They have been uh, associated with the development of schizophrenia, either when they are hyperactive or hypoactive or underactive. Also, environmental factors such as uh, abnormal fetal development, gestational diabetes, preeclampsia, emergency cesarean section and other birthing complications, maternal malnutrition and vitamin D deficiency, winter beds, urban residence, migration, as well as alcohol consumption and drug use have been associated with um, development of um, schizophrenia. Uh, I'm going to give uh, a short description of what um, gestational diabetes is because uh, that might seem strange. Other, um, other factors seem e easily understandable. So for gestational diabetes is a situation whereby um, a pregnant woman consumes a lot of glucose as well as uh, as a result, um, the glucose level in her bloodstream increases and she passes this to the unborn child through the placenta. Then for um, winter beds, we'll be wondering how winter, um, a season, um, has an infect, a impact on the development of schizophrenia, yes. Um, scientists believe that uh, in winter and in cold seasons, there is more activity from uh, microbes, and as a result, they can affect the development of a baby's brain parts or other parts of the body, causing um, different kinds of uh, abnormalities. Then we can see uh, malnutrition as well. Scientists have believed, uh, have shown that um, when a baby is underweight, we can see here. Yeah, um, they tend to uh, be prone to development of several disorders and schizophrenia have been one disorder that have been linked to um, this kind of complications. Okay, so uh, that takes us to what is the pathophysiologic mechanisms? What are the mechanisms um, with which um, schizophrenia onsets and how does it develop in people that have been diagnosed? Uh, they are similar to what I just explained, what I just explained, we can see here the genetics, several, uh, neurotransmitters, as well as uh, environmental factors relates to this hypothesis that have been formulated to, to describe how schizophrenia um, develops in people. First is the neurochemical abnormality hypothesis, which uh, states that 
neurochemicals are, have to be involved. Then the disconnect hypothesis um, is born from uh, MRI and other neuroanatomical imaging analysis that have shown several um, distortions in brains of people suffering from uh, schizophrenia. While the neurodevelopment hypothesis um, focuses majorly on the uh, people uh, on birth complications, uh, problems and complications attached to um, the birth of a baby of a child. Okay, so these are the three main hypotheses that have been linked. Um, um, this hypothesis will be explained further in um, different lectures apart from this, so I won't go into deep details about them. So uh, what are the symptoms of schizophrenia? The symptoms of schizophrenia are numerous, but for easy understanding, they have been grouped into three, and they are uh, the positive symptoms, the negative symptoms, and cognitive symptoms. Positive symptoms from the name suggest um, symptoms that are added, like additional symptoms, addi additional um, attributes to a person after the development of schizophrenia. Uh, a common example, of this is um, hallucinations, just like you saw in the video earlier on in this presentation. Delusions, disorganized speech, and uh, as well as um, thoughts. These symptoms um, are positive because uh, they were not present in the person before the development of schizophrenia. And once schizophrenia develops, these symptoms be begin to show, they begin to surface. So they are like addition to the person. While negative symptoms are like the opposite of positive symptoms in the in understanding because uh, it is it is what a person does before and then is being taken away um, as a result of the development of schizophrenia. Um, the the popular ones are anhedonia. Anhedonia is a situation where a person um, stops or ceases to show joy in what they used to show joy in before. Um, for instance, a person loves to watch uh, movies, and after the development of schizophrenia, the person does not derive joy in watching movies, or a person loves to um, go on um, tours or travel around, and then with the development of schizophrenia, they stopped liking um, all of these things, they stopped deriving joy in these things. So this is um, what anodonia is all about. Then evolution is a lack of will. This, um, pe people with schizophrenia tend to lack the will to do things. They lack, lack the will to do, do things. Then the third um, common one is blunted affect. Blunted affect is when a person cannot show emotions. They, 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 they don't show emotions. Whether they're happy, whether they're sad, you don't know. They're just there. They don't show their emotions, even to their loved ones. Then uh, the cognitive symptoms uh, have to do with um, higher cognitive functions like memory issues, inability to process social cues. Uh, for instance, somebody driving and then seeing a traffic light cannot understand what green light means, what red light means, and what yellow light means. So these are some of the uh, complications attached to uh, schizophrenia. Then last is the impaired sensory perception. This has to do with a person in uh, unable to process um, sensory perceptions appropriately. Uh, when, when a person is approaching a person, uh, uh, when a loved one is approaching somebody in schizophrenia and is telling them it's okay, you'll be fine, you'll be this, you'll be that, you need to go to, you need to go see the doctor. And in their mind, they are hearing other voices telling them this person is threatening you, this person is going to kill you, this person is going to do this, do that to you. So they interpret every word that this uh, person is talking, saying to them in a different way. They sense things in an abnormal way. So that's what impaired sensory perception is all about. Then other symptoms include distractibility, anger, anxiety, depression, lack of insight, sleep, sleep disturbances, as well as the use of substance in an abnormal way, as well as um, over, um, overtly consuming um, alcohol and other hard drugs. Because um, when a person is unable to sleep, is hearing voices, they tend to use these drugs to suppress what they are feeling, and as a result, um, develop a lot of um, health complications. Okay, so having learned of the symptoms, we need to understand what are the phases of um, schizophrenia uh, occurrence. 
when it's when when schizophrenia occurs in a person, it occurs in episodes, and these episodes are characterized by three main phases, uh, because after an episode occurs, then the person tends to draw back to normal. It's like um, an aggrav aggravation of the symptoms. Then um, these symptoms begin to drop, 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 drop at some point. Then um, after some time, the episode occurs again. So this is what um, the phases of schizophrenia is. So that's why schizophrenia is divided into phases. So it is characterized by three major phases, the prodromal phase, the acute phase, as well as the recovery phase. For the prodromal phase, um, there's decline. It is characterized by decline in functioning, social withdrawal, physical complaint, as well as newfound interest in uh, religion and occult. Why the acute phase is the like the mid mid, mid phase where uh, positive symptoms start to emerge. I explained them earlier. Then perceptual disturbances start to show up, delusions as well as disorganized uh, thought uh, and disordered um, thoughts start to uh, pop up. Then for the third phase is the recovery phase. Like I explained earlier, the hep episode comes, then with time it recedes, it recedes. And at this point, you could notice um, negative symptoms as well as all thinking and behavior. So this is like um, a mid phase between each episode, the recovery phase. So when, when an episode happens, then the person recovers a bit, then another episode, then the person recovers, another episode recovery, another episode recovery. So these are the major phases of psychosis in schizophrenia. So um, how is schizophrenia diagnosed? Having learned of the history of schizophrenia, um, what is schizophrenia, then um, learned of the pathophysiological mechanisms, as well as the causes and etiology and the risk factors, how is schizophrenia diagnosed? Um, I explained um, a bit about this earlier, that according to the DSM-5, um, schizophrenia is diagnosed as a psychotic disorder. And this is a clinical um, process where um, a lot of uh, assessments are carried out to, ca to cancel out any other factor that could also cause psychosis before these factors are now put into consideration that, okay, I haven't counseled out that, oh, um, the, the symptoms of um, Parkinson's, the symptoms um, of uh, the symptoms of maybe schizoaffective disorder is not present in this person, then they can now go further to use um, this particular set of criteria to characterize a person's um, kind of schizophrenia. So the person must have suffered from um, six months, at least, six months of persistent occupational dysfunction plus the presence of two or more of these um, listed uh, symptoms which must have occurred for a significant um, period of time during a one month um, one month period so this is um the way it is diagnosed according to the dsm-5 while um, according to the icd-10 it is diagnosed as in this box on the left or this one on the right, plus um, thorough risk assessment, assessment of past medical and family history, as well as social and um, history of recreational drugs and alcohol use, and counseling out um, potential causes of potential causes of um, potential causes of psychosis such as Parkinson's, multiple sclerosis, and other brain uh, problems that could lead to psychosis. Also, the presence of uh, recent neurological impairments in such people um, are also checked out. Are also checked out before these factors or this criteria can then be used to diagnose that this person is actually suffering from this particular type of um, schizophrenia. Uh, furthermore, uh, the person can also be sent for um, um, imaging, imaging to to see anatomical malformations in the person's uh, brain, abnormalities in the brain using the um, computer tomography on the left hand side, and you can see on the right right hand side a magnetic um, resonance imaging apparatus. So these are the two uh, most uh, most uh, 
robust techniques of assessing green issues when it comes to schizophrenia because they, they are able to show difference between gray and white matters when when there's malformations in the brain as well as show um, problems with surrounding vascular tissues um, in the brain uh, for more information about CT scanning and um, MRI scanning you can check out uh, from the links uh, below so uh, having known about the uh, criteria for diagnosis when a, a schizophrenia is now diagnosed how what how do they group them uh what are the classifications that are, are possible after diagnosing schizophrenia so there are major five classifications and they are catatonic residual paranoid disorganized and undifferentiated um, schizophrenia um, types so for catatonic um, schizophrenia it could either be catatonic stupor, catatonia excitement, or alternating catatonia, where um, catatonia stupor is um, characterized by a person um, showing some motor abnormalities, as well as catatonia excitement, but in a, in a, uh, in a more um, uh, exa exative manner, while alternating catatonia is a um, mixture between um, when a person displays uh, catatonia stupor and then at some point catatonia excitement and um, for residual um, schizophrenia it is all marked by emotional blunting eccentric behavior illogical thinking uh, social withdrawal loosening of uh, and loosening of um, associations um, paranoid schizophrenia on the other hand is mainly um, characterized by delusions different forms of delusions it could be positive it could be negative uh, positive delusions like uh, I can solve the problems of the whole world I I can I know how to link the whole world together just in, in in the person's room thinking about all of these things and writing them writing them down in maybe a piece of um, white paper and doing nothing this is these are the kind of um, delusions or or oh I'm going to win the Olympics when the person cannot even compete in an Olympics okay so that is for paranoid schizophrenia then for disorganized um, schizophrenia type, this is characterized by, uh, it is, I think the name explains it all. Everything about this person is disorganized from thought disorders to incoherence to severity of associations, extreme social impairment. The person cannot perform well in public. The person cannot even work or do anything. Uh, or changeable delusions and uh, hallucinations. Today, hallucination, delusions, hallucination, delusions, delusions, hallucinations, on and on like that. And for undifferentiated schizophrenia, it's um, a kind of schizophrenia in which all subtypes of schizophrenia are expressed in a particular person or a particular um, class of schizophrenia is, uh, is seen in a person but not well um, expressed. So this is when it is termed undifferentiated because you cannot differentiate which one is um, actually happening to this uh, particular uh, person. So what are the treatment methods that are available for schizophrenia? The treatment methods that are available for schizophrenia um, are majorly through medications, uh, electroconvulsive therapy, as well as cognitive behavioral therapy, uh, and health and drama. Um, nowadays, the most used methods are cognitive behavioral therapy, art and drama, and medications. These are termed as um, psychosocial um, interventions. The psychosocial interventions have been proven to be effective when combined with uh, medications. Uh, both methods have to be combined. They, they, they cannot work single-handedly as far as research is concerned. Um, while electroconvulsive therapy is least used for people because it, it has um, a lot of um, limitations as well. So for medications, the use of oral second generation um, antipsychotics is first um, started for anyone who has been diagnosed with schizophrenia. Um, you can see example of these drugs on the right hand side here, albuprazole, olazapine, asenapine, and a lot of them like that. Then when um, a person is successfully using these uh, medications and it is effective, um, clinicians tend to prescribe drugs that would help them to comply with these medications so that they can continue to see improvement in their treatment. So um, example of these um, medications includes the clopentazole, flovenazine, aloperidol, and other class of peridols. 
uh, on and on like that. Then uh, in some cases, uh, when uh, they, they are introduced to this SGHs, or second generation antipsychotics, they do not work. Uh, as a result, um, they, they, they are referred to as treatment resistant schizophrenics, and they use these strong medications to help them or combine antipsychotics as well as estradiol or allopurinol and other class 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 of uh, pyrinols to help them uh, suppress their episodes so that they become they, they become uh, they, they they will have rest while facing um all these um, episode before using um other methods like psychosocial interventions so once um, this part of uh, treatment has been successful there is need for prophylaxis as well as rehabilitation which is the maintenance phase um, people that are suffering from schizophrenia are maintained and then they are trained they are they are shown how to be able to blend again into the community because you know when, when suffering from schizophrenia they tend to be socially withdrawn they tend to be um, stigmatized um, and this can lead to a lot of uh, problems okay so Having learned of all of this, and as well as the treatment of uh, management of methods of schizophrenia, uh, we we'll come to the end of our presentation. But um, there are some important points I want us to remember, take away from this presentation. And uh, they heard that schizophrenia is not split personality. Schizophrenia is not schizoaffective disorder. It's not uh, DID. It's not all disorder disorders because it is uh, practically related to fragmented thinking while um split, split personal split personality is um, related to split personality um, when a person has two different personalities or more um, to deal with uh, like bipolar disorders they are all different from schizophrenia they are not the same disorders also schizophrenia is a psychotic disorder which requires serious um, and dedicated medical attention as well as clinical um, diagnosis and its cause and etiology or, or etiology is unknown. However, many risk uh, factors have been suggested, and we, uh, we already explained them. They relate to genetics, family history, changes in neurotransmitter levels, and several neuroenvironmental factors. Also, the symptoms of schizophrenia can be in form of added um, problems or added um, challenges or health problems or um, withdrawal of um, good, uh, good characteristics from a person, which is negative subtraction, positive addition, negative subtraction, or cognitive, which, is, uh, which relates to cognitive functions such as memory, uh, perception, and proce uh, processing um, social cues, like I explained earlier. Then schizophrenia can be managed with medications, and patients can live a good life. Yes, this is a very good um, aspect because most people think when, when a person is suffering from schizophrenia, that is the end. No, schizophrenia is not the end of the world. Having schizophrenia is not the end of the world. People can actually have it and still live a good life. In fact, about one third of patients with schizophrenia fully get remission from their, from their symptoms. Remission is not actually recovery. Some people recover, but... Um, there is not much um, details on recovery, but for remission, people face the symptoms, just like you can see in that video, the person um, could, still hear the sim could still hear the voices, still facing the symptoms, but they could still go about to do what they want to do without being hindered. And um, one um, important thing is that uh, schizophrenia, schizophrenics, people who have um, schizophrenia are not violent and aggressive or dangerous that is a myth because nowadays we have methods of managing schizophrenia and they are not aggressive they can go about doing their daily things while they hear voices and they would they are never aggressive but on the red alert is the fact that uh schizophrenia uh, is bound to rise the the incidence is increasing yearly and this is um, not a good one, but um, with research, 
I believe that all the problems and the, um, the challenges attached to schizophrenia can be um, solved in years to come as quick as possible. With this, I come to the end of my presentation. And if you feel like you want to learn more about schizophrenia, um, here are my references. You can go online, search about them, watch some YouTube videos, although not all YouTube videos depict schizophrenia appropriately. But like the example I gave earlier on, you can watch that video in full. That's a very good explanation of what schizophrenia is all about. So um, I want to acknowledge, I, I, I would like to say thank you to Enigma U for the opportunity to present this um, part of the um, tutorials because it's very important to me uh, as a student of cognitive science and technology. And I also say a very big thank you to um, Dr. John Kenny, the mastermind behind the Enigma U for uh, making this uh, a possibility for making Enigma, for bringing up the idea of Enigma U. And also, my presentation will be incomplete if I do not say thank you to everyone who has been watching from whatever part of the world from the beginning of my presentation up to you now. Uh, and if you have any questions or any inquiries, you can contact the email enigmau enigmau2022 at gmail.com or follow Dr. John Kenny at Dr. John Kenny on Instagram and uh, Twitter. Thank you once again.